who feel uh, you know, embarrassed in, uh, in front of the camera, but they think she will because she's quite uh, we will see it. Okay. So you would, uh, of course, you would prefer if uh, okay. I, can, uh, I think uh, let me say yes. She will. And uh, <coughs> but this week uh, we will see each other on Thursday, and then on Friday. Is the and uh, okay. So basically, we talked about manual calibration. Capital 
So you have capital L observations, which you want, you, which you want to reproduce with the young model. And your model simulation, we can call it Q after T. So for instance, if you refer to here, the observer you can call it QT, and the simulator you can call it Q up T. So basically, the goodness of the fit is assessed by comparing QT with Q up T, and a very traditional, classical, and much used objective function is given by what is called least squares objective function. And the least square is given by much more weight 
in this procedure. So you put emphasis on the higher errors. And in hydrology, especially in the rainfall and modeling, the highest errors are experienced during floods, during high flows. I want to be clear, when, when you get an high flow, you have a value like 100. When you get a low flow, the value is about 1. So there is, in hydrology, when you talk about river flows, there is a huge difference between high flow and low flows. The order of magnitude can be uh, two order of magnitudes difference. So you may vary from 0.1 to 100, which means three orders of magnitude. And therefore, if you square the, during the high flows, the error is much more relevant because think to a value of 100. If your simulation is 90, it's a very good simulation, and the error is 10. If you refer to a value of 1, a very bad simulation is 0.3, and the error is just 0.7. In percentage terms, it's a significant error, even if you have low flows. But in absolute terms, and here I'm, I'm just talking about, not in percentage there, but I'm talking about real values of the errors. During floods, you have much higher errors, of course. And then if you square them, it means that you put more emphasis in the good simulation of floods, high flows. So this least square objective function is fine if you want, if you are interested in the high flows. If you are interested in the low flows, it's not a good objective function. And it's better to use the sum of the absolute values. There are several objective functions that can be used in hydrology. And uh, let me, I already introduced this one. Let me just write down explicitly the sum of the absolute errors. So we have uh, 
sorry, we have a summation here, summation of the uh, numerator, summation t at one one to n. Okay, let me rewrite it because uh, I went too close, so it becomes too small. Let me rewrite it. E equal one minus summation from T equal one to N of Q T minus Q hat T square at the denominator there is a very similar summation, summation T equal one to N of Q T minus mi q square where mi q is the average the mean value of the observed q new mi q is the mean value of the observations and therefore, here at the denominator, you have the square difference between each observation and the mean value. First of all, I told you that this is equivalent to the least squares. And indeed it is, because if you, if you look at this, expression here, the only variable term, variable I mean uh, varying with parameters, is given by the numerator of this ratio here, which is the least squares. The denominator is constant. Once that you have the observation, it's constant, because it's just given by the difference between observation and their mean square. One is constant, so the only thing that is varying is the numerator here. So it's fully equivalent. But of course uh, the objective function is this k. And we will see what are the limits, uh, the range uh, within which the subjective function can vary. And when you escape another and you use a numeric uh, optimizator, a new a numerical procedure to calibrate the parameter, an automatic calibration procedure, when you rescale the objective function, you get results that are not identical. They are slightly different. But conceptually, the two equations, the two objective functions are fully equivalent. So your question should be why people decided to use the Nash efficiency to introduce it, to introduce it is equivalent to least squares. And uh, the reason is very simple. Because it gives to you uh, mm, a coherent evaluation of the goodness of the fit. And uh, I'll give you one example. If I tell you a value of the least squares, and I tell you it's 2 million, you don't understand what it means. You don't understand if it's a good simulation, if it's a good simulation. It depends uh, on uh, the process that you are simulating. This one <coughs> is standardized because what is uh, the maximum value of E? It has a maximum value. Least square doesn't have any maximum. E, Nash efficiency, has a maximum. And the maximum is given by the numerator that goes to zero. If you put the numerator to zero, it means that least squares is zero. It means that the model is perfect. And therefore, E takes value one. So E has a maximum value of one. Now, when the ratio here 
is one. What does it mean? It means that the least squares of the model is the same that you would get if you used it as a model just the mean value. If you use the simulation, the mean value. So what the difference between the numerator and the denominator here? I just substituted the model simulation with the mean value. So if I get an error of the same order of magnitude by using the model with respect to using the mean value as predictor, efficiency is zero. Is it reasonable? Is it reasonable to say that the model has efficiency zero if uh, the order of magnitude of error that I get is similar? the one that I would get by using the mean as predictor. <coughs> okay, let's uh, take into account that the purpose of the model is providing a simulation, a prediction. And uh, you write a mathematical model, which is sometimes complicated, you have seen that it might be complicated, to get a guess of Q, a guess of uh, the river flow. If the order of magnitude of the error that you experience with your guess given by a complicated model is the same kind of error that you get if you take as a guess the mean value, it means that the model is useless because everybody can make a prediction based on the mean value. So if one asks you, what's your guess on the value of the polymer flow for tomorrow? And you guess with the mean value and somebody else guesses with a complicated model and the order of magnitude of the error that, that, that you won't get is the same, then one would say that the model is useless. And uh, this is when you get an efficiency zero, when the predictive capability, the simulation capability of your model is comparable to using just the mean value of the observation as predictor. So it's justified that you say that an efficiency of zero is a very bad result. Still, it's not a lower limit because you could get a model that is even worse than the average. And therefore, the lower limit of the efficiency is minus infinity. But below zero, we are in a situation where the model is completely useless. So the range of interest is between 0 and 1. A model with efficiency 0 is useless. A model with efficiency 1 is perfect. So you understand that this objective function has the advantage of providing a much more meaningful interpretation of uh, the goodness of the fit. If you just refer to least squares, it's not easy to get the interpretation of the goodness of the field. So let's uh, consider this three objective function. There are many more. I'm not uh, going into details. And it's just important that you keep in mind that when you calibrate the parameters you need to define one, just keep in mind that if you are interested in the routes, you should use the sum of the absolute values, mean absolute error. If you are interested in the high flows, let's use less efficiency or least squares, depending on your preference. <coughs> A useful thing that you should know, which we will experience on Friday in practice, is that R has embedded in it many algorithms for finding the optimal value of the objective function. You just need to define for this algorithm your objective function and then R finds the optimum for you. And therefore the automatic calibration principle is very easy. Even when you have a huge number of parameters, now we have algorithms that are very efficient in, in uh, <coughs> finding the optimal value. Okay, mm. 
A final question, what is uh, a good value for the efficiency? Because I told you that we are interested in the range 0, 1, and I told you that the efficiency has the advantage of providing a timely and immediate perspective of the model performances. So you could ask me, but what it means? If I got an efficiency of 0.3, is a good efficiency or not in hydrology? And uh, of course it depends on, on your application, so it's not easy to give a, an immediate reply to this question, but let me give a general reply. And let me say that, in general, if you got an efficiency of uh, less than 0.5, uh, it is considered uh, an unreliable simulation, which for practical purposes is useless, for many of the practical purposes. So when you see that an hydrological model has an efficiency of 0.4, think that for engineering design, it's a model with very low predictive capability. A good efficiency, 0.8 is considered a very good efficiency. It means that the data are of good quality and the model also is a good model for the catchment. Most of the applications cover efficiency between 0.5 and 0.7. Still, I would say that if it's for engineering design, it's better if it is 0.8. 